shop. Can we read together? One to go. I didn't hear. One to go. And it stopped there. Let brotherly love continue. Then the next verse, he says, do not forget to entertain strangers. For by doing some have unwittingly entertain angels. Entertain angels. And he said, remember the prisoners. As if you are chained with them. Those who are mistreated since you yourself are in the body also. Stop here. This is, he said, let brotherly love continue. And he said, look, accept strangers entertain visitors because some people have actually entertained angels and, and literally we are talking about real angels then we are also talking about other human beings that will be a blessing to you tomorrow they are angels there are people that god has sent into your life but they will come and disguise as beggars how you welcome people in your house will determine the message. And everybody you see is an angel in disguise. Because whatever you have done, he will remain with it. And when you have the opportunity to bless you for that thing he has done, he will bless you. Hmm. Yesterday, I believe something gladdened the heart of Mama. There is one of these, her son, that she, sometimes she complains and do all those things. Then we went somewhere and strange i tell you even me i was surprised the woman began to talk to her to say ah i was here oh, i was having my big belly and then I, you know she said two weeks before i gave birth i went and carried one big basin and i was struggling to faith to bring the water to the to home and said you know we have many children so one of them came and then just looked at her and, and collected it he did not i'm not sure he even knows her he collected the water and went and poured it in, in the uh, in Aranda and went and fetched and make sure he finished and full the Aranda and, and go his way. She, then she called him and asked him, who is he? Now, you can imagine that kind of a thing. The woman feels that that is an angel because with her pregnancy, God just sent somebody to help her. When you do something good to somebody, the person holds it. He's looking for opportunity to be a blessing to you. He wants to repay you back. And when God opened the opportunity for him, he wants to do it. And sometimes he will not do it to you. He will do it to your children. Charity begins at home. That's for everybody. Do for angels, do for whatever. But you see, there are two kinds of home. Number one home is... Number one home that we are talking about here is Hebrews chapter 6 verse 9. Or oh, let me begin from this physical home. The first, the first home. The first, okay. The, because there are two homes. One is our immediate home. The second is our spiritual home. Um, let us begin by our physical home. First Timothy chapter five verse eight. First Timothy chapter five verse nine. First Timothy five nine. Go to verse ten. Okay, take me back to verse 8. I think I missed something. Verse 8. So this is our physical home. He said, but, if he said, but, let's go to verse 7 and see what, what is he talking about. He said, and, and these things command that they may, that they may be blameless. Then he said, but, if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. 
we talk about angels, visitors. I think Reverend Patrick was trying to bring this during our Bible studies. To say that as much as we think about outsiders, we should think about the people at home. Our physical home. Now, it is easier to help an outsider than to help the people in your home. The reason is because you don't know the character of the, of the outsider. So, you will not judge the outsider. But you will judge the insider because he is your husband. He is your wife. He is your son. Do you know that if your son has done something terrible to you, you may decide not to give him food. When an outsider comes, you will wash the plates and give him. Now, the Bible is saying that if you cannot take care of the people in your own house, you have denied the faith. And you are worse than an infidel. An unbeliever in this point is an infidel. A person who does not even respect God, believe that God does not exist, and the person who is wicked. Not just an unbeliever who comes to church. He's talking about a person who does not know God. I don't think there's any striker word to use than this. So, as a charity begins where? I don't. The reason is because anybody can abuse me, anybody can attack me, everybody, anybody can say anything and you choose to believe or not. But if the people living with you say something, people outside will believe it. If they say you are wicked, my brother, you are wicked. Your own household. The, the house girl in your house. Your sister's son that is living with you. How do you treat them? Your own children, your husband. I believe that it is a responsibility of the man to provide food in the house. But sometimes you discover that the woman have more money than the man. Either at that instant or even throughout. What do you use that for? I was watching a lady. She was talking. She said God gave her a lot and a lot of money. She began to travel. And she said one day she said something bad to her husband in a, in a disrespectful manner. And she said the Holy Ghost told her. He said, you are abusing the resources that I give to you. He said, I'm going to take it as faster than I gave you. Why? Because she felt that I have an advantage. So I can look down on him. And God was not happy with her. How can you be in a home where as the man you have a shoe of 20,000 for example and your wife does not have a shoe of 6,000. How can you be a woman that you have a wrapper of 35,000 and your husband is wearing rags. But if anyone does not provide for his own, for his own, eh? he say his own, then he say, and especially 
to those of his household he has denied the faith charity begins at home and the bible says he did not say he's an unbeliever he's worse i, I think a, apostle paul is too harsh here he's worse so who is going to talk about me is that zajeka ajida kada zajeka akan cewa you are not providing let them abuse you on, on you know you know sometimes there are many things you will do for the moment for example your children that you can punish them and sometimes they can go out and say kai my father is wicked or my mother is wicked or whatever thing but let them not that one everybody know because when they grow up they will understand that it was not fighting kana gyara sunne ko ba ba but let them not accuse you that you are not providing in the house that you are not providing for them there are many of us that we cherish outsiders more than insiders good to help the outside but when you are in trouble the first person to help you is not outside is close agamata tana da kudi ba ta gina gidan mijinta ba ta ji tana siyan su ka ji tana ajiwa gidan iyayenta eh suna da bank account da mamanta kuma kai baka sani ba ana ta aje kudi suna noma tare kuma kai ma baka sani ba ka san suna noma tare ka sani is a different thing but kai ma baka sani ba abin da hana ajiwa gefe mai an ce saboda ranan da ta bace to idan ranan da ta bace ta tammake ka is okay but amma idan saboda a cire ka ne daga ciki then there is a problem there is a problem kai muna maganar nan ma akwai wayansu mu wanda kuna da iyaye wanda ma iyaye mu ba ku duba so they are members of your household your parents are members of your household and you are not taking care of them you don't think about your mother you don't think about your father all that matters to you is you you and i how is your mother living how do you feel what go and check if some of us we said we are going to go to our parents home and look at the bed your fam your family your mother your father is sleeping on when some kuku kai mu gida jan ku ba but you have seven by seven you sleep here you roll to the other side if you take care of strangers you need to take care of the people close to you when su kuma kuna father the in-laws na ku mother in law she is wicked she is that if you can't take care of her you are worse than an unbeliever bazan ba ta abincin ba muguncin ta ya yawa bazan ba ta abincin ba wani ma zai iya duba matan shi bai ce to tun da shike tana man halin nan i'm not going to give her malam under this heavy anointing kana ginge din barci lafiya nani ka ji ya ka ji ku zane ka kuma ku zane kana gurunguza ka kwana gurun to shine ka zo ka zo na gaba ai sai ka zo na baya saboda kai barci da kyau ai to yanzu zan hana ka barci yawa in ka ji barci sai kai kaman kana zaga kaman kana prayer ko aikin kosha sai kan ta aikin zaga somebody say amen so kar kaman barci a gaba yawa don zan zo zaka ka zo ka fadi a banza sa ce me ne a ce anointing to is the anointing but i are we together here ina mazan da ba ku ba da cefe na gida amma kuna zuwa tudu ku sha ku nun koko ba abinci a gida you are worse what that scripture you know one day i made that scripture i became afraid jesus did not say you are going to heaven because you preach powerfully there's ba maganan wa aziva a ciki ba maganan prayer a ciki you would have said for those who are praying no prayer o in kai prayer kuma prayer ka bai taimake wani ya ci abinci ba to prayer ka ba amfanin shi eba mani but she didn't kill you when she gave birth to you you drink her no no is it suck or drink you suck her no no her breast she grow with you she give you food you fall inside fire she remove you there water she make sure it did not touch you she 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 take care of you take you to school suffer for you go to farm for you now you grow up you have money your mother is a witch If she say which and she take care of you like that you take care of her 
because she would have killed you at that time but she did not your responsibility is to take care of your family those who are close to you those that you are the same blood it is your responsibility help me tell the person close to you say it is your responsibility okay when did you give her money so the message is take care of the people that live in your household amen give them food provide for them number two spiritual house hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9 spiritual house spiritual house So let us go back with this burden that God, I will take care of my of, of my family. Did I say did I say Hebrews? Galatians, Galatians, sorry, Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not grow weary in doing what? Good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose which means that if you lose heart if you do it for one day and you lose heart you will not reap verse 10 verse 10 says therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all especially to those who are of the household of faith let us do good to all especially to those who are in the household of faith so there are two households the one is our physical household the second is the spiritual household let us do good to all now god is not discriminating anybody anybody meet on the street stranger everybody do good but especially to those in the household of faith now it is useless it does okay not useless but it doesn't make sense okay like somebody here does not have food to eat and we take food from here and give somebody that is not a member of this church it doesn't make sense do good to all of, but especially those in the household of faith yet when you have opportunity i like that word he said therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all Sometimes we don't have the opportunity. Sometimes you see a need you wish you have, but you don't. You see problem you want to solve, but you don't have the opportunity. But he said, if you have the opportunity, do good to all. Everybody that comes your way, do good to that person. But especially to those in the household of faith. So when I come to church, I need to know how are people living? And I need to do good to them. I need to help them. The Bible says Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were sick. Casting out devils. He went about doing good. So doing good is part of our resource. You know, in our, in our bulletin, I said something. I said, how could it be that you are a Christian but your colleagues see you as a wicked person? Sometimes when you walk in the school, you will see a teacher 
that the whole students know that he's a wicked man. But he's an elder in the church. But he is wicked. You go to the local government, you see somebody, he is wicked, but he is an elder somewhere. Which means you are living a double life. Everywhere you are, there is this thing called goodness that we must be able to put in people's lives. But he said, especially to those in the household of faith. So we say charity begins at home. You start from somewhere. You start from somewhere. When you see somebody that has a need, we looked at it in James and, and, and John. He said, do not pray. Do not pray. If somebody is hungry, give him food to eat. If he asks you or he does not, offer him help. So nobody should say that you are taking care of the church and in your house, you can't take care of your wife. You carry money and you give me, but your wife does not have, there's no food in your house and you carry money and give me. God said, even though you give to me, God said you are worse than, you have denied the faith and you are worse than an unbeliever. Ah, but it is pastor I give, but you have not taken care of the person in your own house. There is lack in your house. There is sacrificial giving. That is okay. That sacrificial giving. That you can give sacrificially. But you need because the people that will testify about your faith they are the people that are closest to you. They want to see the light. That's why I said this message that God brought this month is a rebuke to us because this is the secret of flourishing. That's why I said you will see that the church will take a shift. One pastor died. You know, for us pastors, we have a lot of those problems. Sometimes, whatever you have, you give it outside when the home is suffering. Even your time, because of the busy schedule that you have, the time to spend at home becomes a problem. So one guy died, a minister, and they came to testify. And people keep testifying about the things he has done, the things he has helped them to do, whatever he has done for them, this and that. And like one of the, the doubters was asking the mother, who are they talking about? Is it our father or somebody else? She was shocked because she knew that the father does not care for them. They know that the father does not bother about them. They know that it is the mother struggling to go to the market, bring food for them. But for him as an evangelist, he moved from one place to another. He never created time. Even when he has money that they give him in his preaching, he moved to another preaching engagement. And the doubter said, that should not be our father. But the church were pressing him. But at home, he's a nobody. Listen to me. Many of us outside Musa Kaya and I respect Namo Ama Agida, there is no single respect. The reason is because you are not taking care of that home. I think the Holy Spirit is bringing you back there so that things will change. The little thing you have, bring it. Women know how to manage it. You place your friends outside, but your family is not in good with you. Mazamuna doona. Za iyo zona wa majelisa. Achinama. Masusha ngia zao joso siya kwa la bengia. Kaja ana ya bum miji. Kaka kama wani abinkirki ni gia ni yana siya musu. Kaka miji kine kinga kirki nshi kwa. Akwe kirki. Gia yana te siya ya siya musu nama. Ana tafarin chiki. Amazi is the kid that the that struggle to have been changed. No wonder the Bible says you are worse than you have denied the faith, and you are worse than an unbeliever. Yaza ya che gide maybe ba abinchi. Matata na struggle. Muna the one culture. I I praise our women everywhere. Especially between Bokos and Mungu people. Women, they don't want to even depend on the man. They don't want. Even when you go to Birom land, it's the same thing. 
matane ta je gona matane za ta yi noma mijin zai ta shangiya so idan mutane sun tuba sai su manta su doka the same culture su samu kan su bara su tunanin gida ba ba su tunanin me ne na faru a gida ana yaban mutum babban mutum ne amma a gida ba komai in zai ba ma matan shi kudi sai ya shiga toilet ko san dalili saboda baya son bata baya son ta ga kudin da na da shahaji boye wa saboda ya cire dan kadan ina ya bata in hal ya samu kudi zai ce kudin nan ba nawa bane an ban aika ne may god deliver us so if you are worse than an unbeliever worse than an where is your where that definitely you go to where is prepared for who for the devil if you are worse than a non believer ko me yace you have denied the faith you are worse than an unbeliever who is worse than an unbeliever is satan himself so where it is prepared for you and for the angels of satan that's where you are going ah uh, but pastor what is my prayer bible did not talk about prayer here if you do not do the right thing forget about your prayer it's useless she asked her, john yacheba how can you say you go to somebody and you are praying god bless you in the name of jesus god bless you and there's nothing i tell you a story of a pastor who a lady came and met and was talking to him and said gaskiya banda abinci a gida ina da bukata ina da kaza ina da abu kaza ba komai a gida yace ayya ayya yarwa ba komai tace kai sannu ko sannu sorry sorry to ya zamu yi duniyan kenan abubuwa they are very hard let me pray for you that go open the door for you sanani hypocrisy prayer ma be shi yayi gentle ma be gentle ba he was praying she kneeled and said in the name of jesus father bless this woman ya da dan wayan su thousands na shi aljo da ya haka kawai sai ta san ma haka sai ta buga matan pau a ido sai ta duba sai ta ga kudi ta daga kudi ta ce ubangiji ho ho inji mutanenmu ta ce na gode maka ya kara sa addu'a ta ce pastor you are a powerful man of god there is no body like you can you imagine as you are praying money came instantly money fall from heaven to ya zai ya ce kudin shi ne when he told like he does not He said glory be to God. And I pray for every pastor here and everybody. May God arrest you when you have something and you don't want to give it. In the name of Jesus. You can imagine the pastor was so ashamed, the woman and the woman was sincerely she thought the money came from heaven because she believed a pastor. in one day also ya aje baiko anan wani ga ya aje baiko a wannan gefe wanda zai bayar a church amma babban ya aje a wannan gefe dan zo sa baiko ya zo ya buga rawa ya buga rawa ya manta kawai sai ya sa nuwa kawai sai daga yana sake wata na tafiya kawai sai ya ga ai wrong ne ya koma ya dauka problem ne ya bari problem ya dan pause ya tuba ya ci kai kare je sa nuwa kaka bana sata ne ya ci gaba da tafiya I pray that God will I I believe God has spoken to us. Yes. It is a message that God has brought. Let our faith be practical. Let there be changes in our lives. Somebody say amen. Now who will do that? Lastly, don't wait and say that I don't have the little you have. God is not talking about big people because somebody will say ah I message the pastor ya for denzu mutalakawa mu a ji dadi yanzu saboda wanda suna da shinin za su fara ba mu No why do you put yourself among the poor? Why do you put yourself? Jesus said there will always be poor among you, but he did not say you are the poor person. Why will you choose to be the person to be receiving every time? The little you have share with somebody. I want to stop here. Let us talk to the Lord. Thank you Father. Thank you Lord Jesus. Can we just stand up on our feet? And I appreciate the Lord and thank him for the message we have had today. It's a practical message. It's not a message of that you zoom into some spiritual things. I don't want to take you into the spirit. Spirit in Kenya is the spirit of giving. The reason why many of us are suffering is because we don't provide. Now listen to me everybody, open your eyes. Open your eyes. This scripture that is very very powerful. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. First Peter chapter three verse seven. It says that that 
husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being hearers together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. The, the woman does not need to pray to say, Father, frustrate my husband. No. As long as what you have, you don't make provision at home. You will continue to be frustrated. It's not a prayer. The woman does not need to pray. It's already in the atmosphere. For those who do not respect, do your responsibility. That's all we need. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Bring the little you have. Then the Bible says, your prayer will not be hindered. Could it be the reason why many of us men are being frustrated? Because we are frustrated at our home. Ask the Lord. Say, Father, look in the casa. I want an aya. Biam bukata njida. Biam bukata mutanene ecclesia. Yesu kayafini. Lord, forgive me for not taking care of my own household and for not taking care of the people in the church. These two people, they must be in your mind to bless your family. If there is somebody who has not gone to school in your home, but you are sponsoring others outside, you need to think back and begin to take care of those people at home. Bible said, let brotherly love continue. But let's, let it be in the family, in the church. Then the world can see how we love each other. And the world will begin to flock into the church. Because they know these people love themselves. They love each other. That's why the New Testament church, the Bible says, nobody regards anything as his own. But they were taking care of one another in the church. And their increased greatly power was released upon them. There are a lot of sicknesses that it is not as a result of mosquito. It is because of lack of food. If you can make provision for them, if you can have your mind close to them and you can help people, it's going to be a great blessing. I know as a church, we may have failed in one way or the other. That's why I said this message is not only for, it's not for them, it's for us. It's for me. Ask the Lord, say, Father, give me the grace for empathy. Speak to me, oh God. Oh God, change my life and my attitude in the name of Jesus. That I will not just be thinking about, about myself, but I will think about somebody. I will think about somebody. I will look at somebody else and see how I can benefit him. And see how I can be a blessing to someone else. I give you some few minutes just to pray. Thank you, Father. Let's just do some practical team prayer. Just turn and hold the hand of somebody, two or three people or four people. If you're around, just hold each other. Just look at.